News of the Adamsfield rush spread quickly, and within a few months it was home to over 2,000 wishful souls hoping to strike it rich. Early access to Adamsfield was no simple feat. First, one must catch the train to the last stop at Fitzgerald, then follow part of the old overgrown Great Western Railway pack track. This pack track was cut in 1908 to assist the movement of supplies to survey parties in a failed effort by the state to connect Hobart to Strawn via railway. After 24 kilometres, the Florentine River was reached, where a quick stop could be had and refreshments available at the small township by the river. The final 16 kilometres would pass through Myrtle Forest, Buttongrass Plains, and then up and over the Thumbs Range to reach the town site. This early track proved very tiring and the Buttongrass Plains made it impossible to supply the town by pack horse. By the end of 1925, work on a new route had begun. This track, a few kilometres south of the original track, would be four foot wide and corded with myrtle planks to allow the use of pack horse. By this time, around £100,000 worth of metal had been sold, mainly to overseas buyers. Well, who would buy so much osmeridium and for what reason, you ask? Introducing the fountain pen. This revolutionary pen was to put an end to the 1400 year lifespan of the dip pen. This new self-supplying pen was made possible by its reservoir of ink contained above the metal tip. And yep, you guessed it, osmeridium tipped. The rich ground was soon worked out and shortly after the first winter, only 200 residents remained. By this time, the town was equipped with a post office, police station, a bakery and even a hospital. Multiple reasons exist as to why Adamsfield ultimately failed. These range from hit and miss ground, corruption with osmeridium prices, the Great Depression and of course World War II. But the real nail in the coffin was the introduction of an instrument we all use today, the ballpoint pen. By 1953, the company BIC was selling 40 million pens per year. The demand for osmeridium crumbled, along with its price. It now sits at only one-fifth the price of gold. The last resident to live in Adamsfield was Stan Gurney. He lived in the post office and remained postmaster until he died in October 1961. The town was then left to rot in the middle of the wilderness until a fire was started by the Tasmanian government using aerial incendiaries on the Boyd River Flats in 1972. Along with this, forestry has replaced half the pack track with its sustainable timber practices. But if you know where to look, you can still find parts of this Tasmanian wonder and that's exactly where I'm heading today. Please don't get broken into. All right, here we are on Forestry Road number five off the Florentine Road, Florentine Valley. And I'm a few hundred meters off starting the official Adamsfield pack track. And uh, it's 12 o'clock or 12.45 or something, it's lunchtime. So I'm not gonna have enough time today to get all the way to Adamsfield. So what I'm thinking is I'll walk for a while, pull up at the Florentine River. There's a hut there. Um, spend the night there and then send it tomorrow all the way to Adamsfield. Yep, sounds like a plan. Let's get into it. Thumbs over there. Look at the face on that thing.
All right, I've just made it to Adamsfield. Well, nearly, anyway, I'm uh, on the boom gated full drive track that leads into it from the Gordon River Road. And uh, yeah, I'm almost about to pass the town site of Adamsfield. I think it's around here somewhere. Uh, one of the streets was actually part of the pack track, so I think that was Edward Street in the southern part of the town, which is um, somewhere around here. But I'm not going to check that out today because, oh yeah, must be right on it here, over there in all that bracken fern. Um, I'm not going to check that out today because I've still got a couple of k's to go to where I'm setting up camp um, and then I'll leave this for tomorrow. I've got a chart so I'll walk around if I can and try and figure out where things were and if anything still remains like piping or anything like that. But yeah, for the meantime it's just going to be cruising down this little old lonely road and um, yeah, setting up camp. This is so freaking pretty through here. Even though the bushfire went through it, it's still magic. There's a truck. So, it was a car, and yeah, had people in it, obviously. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, they're from the Mountain Huts Preservation Society. They're down here for the weekend actually fixing one of the huts, which is just crazy timing. Um, so anyway, I'm going to head down that way to get water and stuff, but I don't know if I'll camp there because there's like a dozen of them or something. So, uh, yeah, the plan's changed a bit. I'm trying to figure out where the bloody hell I can camp, considering mountain huts were taking up the hut area and the bogans with the loud music were taking up the camping area. I'm kind of zeroing in on somewhere. Tell you what, if I had a crevice and hook, I'd be into that. Here's a fun fact for you. So this river here, which is Adam River, hence the name Adams Field, has another river which runs into it called Eve River. And if you were to follow Eve River upstream, you would find two tributaries named Cain and Abel. And this will be my campsite tonight. Essentially, the Garden of Eden. Here's a pro tip, if you can get your tent set up before dark, get all the mozzies before it gets dark. <clears throat> That's my advice. Mmm, bag bowl. It's like the only one that's decent from that range. Alright, let's have a look at this map. I did some serious Ks today, 17.93 Ks from where I left the car. Now, most of it, especially from Florentine River to Myrtle River, was amazing. Uh, open Myrtle Forest and heaps of the track left. But I noticed that like where it was meant to be afterwards was just 
not even there. I couldn't find the track at all. Luckily, the um, forest was pretty dry, and it was just like fern and eucalypt and stuff, so I just vaguely followed the path anyway, and made it to Adamsfield, excuse me. Um, so, that's the town site there that I've got to check out tomorrow. Um, this is where the bogans are with the music, and then this is where the mountain hut preservation guys are. I'm all the way down here at um, Adams Falls. So, what I'm thinking tomorrow is, like, I want to try and dig up as much history as I can, and I'll have a good look in Adamsfield Township. I'll pull out the town chart and try to place things where I can. Then, what I'm thinking is, I'll go up Packer's Spur. I think there's a water race on the right somewhere, and then somewhere around this fall, Jeffrey Falls, which is that one there, there's an old, the original old track used to run down that all the way to Tiger Creek, and uh, there was a camp here where I put this marker called Clifford's Camp. So I was thinking maybe I'll check that out, and then I can follow this creek down to... Um, pretty much where the Adamsfield track was good again and then just follow it good all the way back to the Florentine and then onwards to the car so uh, hopefully that will um will be interesting because I'm not into this like four-wheel drive track that just I don't know it feels like everywhere's been smashed around here and I want to get a little deeper I was just having a look on the chart here and it's a bit messy but this is the one from um, Nick's book. I was actually just looking at where I'm camping down here close to the falls and it seems like there's a foot track that runs between Adam and Eve River roughly in the middle all the way to where Main Creek joins. So uh, I don't reckon many people would have walked that track in recent years so I'm going to follow that up to there um, and then the um, the huts that the guys are restoring are there somewhere I'll pop in there briefly um, before heading to the township of Adamsfield where I'll have a good look in there No nuggets. But there is quite a bit of uh, grey sand in it, <clears throat> along with the black sands. I'm wondering if that is ultra fine Oz meridian. Don't know. Anyway, I'm not prospecting here. I was just cleaning my um, little pot, as I always do with some sands, but. Time to hit the road. This here certainly looks like a, a well-worn track. More than an animal pad. You can see the depression there. Seems to head straight through here. Don't know about that. An interesting cutout.
Just picking my gaps at the moment. Anywhere where it looks kind of clear to the next open space is a goer until I get back into the rainforest. gotten pretty thick all of a sudden like real thick <sighs> something slept there in that little pocket pull out the DNA kit test the hairs this um, area was reported to be the the area that the last thylacine was captured, or the Florentine Valley, I think it was, which is just over from Adamsfield. So anything's possible out here. All right, that's pretty much me done for the foot track, or what was left of the foot track, not much. But uh, I guess it's to be expected in this type of forest, like it just doesn't hold history land. Something that's a hundred years old and it was only used probably to go down and get water from a river, I'm guessing. And just like maybe a swim spot on Sundays or something for the families. Um, yeah, can't expect much of it to be still here. So I'm almost back at the huts and then I'll pop in there, say good day to the guys at the Mountain Huts Preservation Society. So this is Morley's mansion, who was um, a leaseholder up here for many years. This is one of the only remaining huts left in Adamsfield. She's got some real character, this place. You can see here the original wallpaper. Maybe. And then coming through here into the Quinn wing, you've got this huge bedroom. You like so you walk up, the sign is there. Yep, yep that's where so, the And you can are. see that turn off there. Yep. And the hall was up on the top here. You'll see, you can have that. Oh, I can have this one. Yeah, oh, awesome. Yep, thank you. Um, but that gives you a bit of an idea. So according to the map Roger gave me, uh, post office and store was right here that must be some of it here must be part of the old post office Surely. I'd say so. All right, so we're on Stacy Street. Stacy was the last name of the guys who made the initial discovery of Osmeridium in Adamsfield. There is uh, some sort of pole in there. Might have been the hospital or the mines department. I think those poles were for the te telephone line, which came from Fitzgerald to service the area.
really hard to figure out where things were because it's so ferned out in here but I mean there's little scattered bits of life everywhere really Looks like an old uh, washing basket or something. Pretty interesting to just walk around and pick pieces out from it. It's a shame so much has been lost. I would have loved to have seen it before the 70s fires. What's that over there? Another piece of china, some sort of jar, that's really thick, must have needed cooling or something, better find the sly grog shop then, this could be it here, judging by the amount of bottles. Cascade. Well, it's been a blast, but I think I'm going to call it for old Adams Field. I could spend all day just kicking about in these ferns, finding bottle after bottle. But it's like lunchtime, and if I leave now, I can make it back to the car before it's dark. So I think that's the plan. I'm gonna climb partly up the Packers Spur and then divert off down that waterfall route. And I'll pop in and see if I can find any remnants of the Clifford's camp before getting back onto the pack track. By Adams Field. It's fun.
I'm almost back at the car now, which pretty well wraps this trip up. Been a massive two days for me, a lot bigger than what I was expecting, but I managed to do it in two days, which surprised me. So I'm stoked with that. Stoked I got to see some of the old Adams Field track, and I'm amazed how much of it is preserved in that Myrtle Forest. It's just unbelievable. It's a shame that the township's not the same, but those bushfires messed it up pretty bad. So there's not much you can do about that. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast. If you did, leave me a thumbs up, drop a comment, subscribe if you haven't, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.